After the competition between the Zegneko and the Architens, everybody was talking. The only issue was they couldn't talk to Professor Cindy. She was not around at all. Nobody could see her. The only communication they got from her was about how she had to fix some of the students, as in reattaching parts and try to put them all back together, and how Larry would have to deal with many of the classes alone. Gregnar would try and take as much advantage of Cindy's absence as possible to make sure that nobody was stealing her man. This was a major deal, especially when it came to forced society. And students would realize this, as they wanted to talk to Professor Larry about the battle, and decide to walk in without knocking. Immediately, they froze as his hand stuck up, all four fingers pointing the other directions as he just turned and said, OUT! They stopped for a moment as they saw the back of a certain forced and the red hair draped down her back, as a sign of shock as her tail shooted almost straight up into the air. She was, of course, facing away from them, and this made many of the human males actually pause for a moment as they tried to contemplate what they were seeing, though they wouldn't have too much time to figure it out, as as they were trying to turn around and shuffle back through the door, several different projectiles came flying, not just one, not just two, but over a half of a dozen, many of which actually flew through the door and struck true on the students who were there, a couple of ouches as the curse words came from the office. And, of course, one very loud scream, almost like a roar, came from there. They were all worried that uh, their formerly forced wife of their instructor might come out and rip their throats out if she was that pissed off. To their fortune, Larry came out and simply stuck his head out the office as everyone could hear things moving around inside. He simply reprimanded them for not knocking, and then currently looked at his wife and said, It's okay, honey. You good now? She didn't say anything, at least nothing, that the students could hear. However, just before he opened the door, he turned to them and quietly said, Make a hole. When the students barely moved, he simply said, Make a hole, make it wide! And boy, did they move quick. Everyone pushed out to the side as Gretnar walked past, giving her husband a quick kiss on the cheek as she went by. With that, she shot each of them a death glare that made every single one of them have ice run right down their spine. With that, the professor simply ushered them in and basically said, What the hell do you want? The students proceeded to ask about the battle in the air and what Larry thought about it. But more importantly, whether they should be looking into getting wings themselves. They saw Cindy actually have wings, even though hers were more for show, they weren't for go. They were far too small for that. And Larry had to remind them of something simple. That is, they're not old enough yet. It's well known, well documented, that everybody needs to actually reach the rate of full maturity before they start altering their bodies. If they don't, they risk unexpected mutations, and when that happens, bad things can happen. Sometimes it's good. Sometimes you just grow an extra lung or an extra heart. Maybe you grow a third kidney or something. Then again, it could go in reverse and suddenly you have no kidneys. You suffer and die from jaundice very, very badly. And while speaking, Larry pulled up some of the historical records and he decided he needed to give them a specific lesson, a history lesson. He checked his wristwatch beforehand and made sure that he had enough time. And then He started by showing them what happens during genetic manipulation, at least how things went. As it turned out, it was right around during or after the last large war that humanity had on its planet. Had a strange name to it. You would think it'd be World War III, but they all gave it some stupid name. As that happened, genetic engineering became commonplace and well known. Every different region... Everyone had a different perspective of it, and everyone looked at it, mainly for military purposes, but there were those who simply wanted to improve their lives. This had the ability to end every single debilitating disease, from MS to polio, you name it, you got it, it's done. They would simply sever off certain limbs that were already affected, and then have you regrow them, or simply adjust your body so that they could fight off the infection itself. Within just a less than a decade 
all diseases were gone, at least in what everybody considered a first world nation. It took a long time before the quote-unquote third world nations were able to get themselves disease-free, but it did happen. But the issue was not just that. When everybody started genetically mutating their own people, there was division between all of them. A division between those who have altered themselves and those that believe themselves to be pure, those that have never altered themselves. Though there was never an out-and-out -out conflict between each other, there was always some sort of fight. However, in some areas, there were small skirmishes, but no large-scale war. The most that happened was a discrimination against those that had altered themselves. Thankfully, for those that had altered themselves, they could usually survive just fine with less food, less water, and definitely less sleep. However, it's kind of difficult to survive when no one's going to hire you, and being destitute was very common. Along with that was the fact that many of them decided to adjust themselves before the technology was even mastered. Because of that, there was a massive loss of life at first as some nations and some companies decide to rush ahead with their ideas of what alterations should happen. In this case, many governments decide to take large numbers of their own people and simply inject them with Lord knows what causing unexpected mutations just so they could see what did what totally disregarding the known science available. Even after that, there was issues with people who had changed themselves being killed, straight up murdered. This would usually happen as someone was afraid that this person who had changed themselves partially into a canine was a giant walking werewolf, and this would make people scared, very scared, especially at night. The occasional shot would run out, and of course, some people decide to use their mutations to do bad things. Gang members would want their own people to be mutated, but the leaders never did it to themselves, of course. They were too good for that. Everybody else should show their loyalty to me by destroying their innards. This sheer arrogance caused many, many of those who had changed themselves to find out very quick that the original adjustments could not be changed back. And because of that, the insane rash of suicides that happened after that. Along with this, the insane greed that came with knowing that you could make a lot of money off of this, charging those hundreds of thousands of dollars just for one go-round to adjust themselves. This could be something as simple as growing a tail, maybe regrowing a kidney you lost during combat or something like that or something like regrowing your ribs that got damaged in a car wreck they charged way too much making debt slaves out of many so as they all know it wasn't the main war that was the problem it was the small scuffles that caused a lot and i mean a lot of death larry had to pause here and actually pull out a small bottle next to him and pour himself a drink this would be the first and probably only time he ever drank in front of his students, but he was remembering some things he would rather have left in the past. He would have left time forget it if it wasn't for the fact that his alterations allowed him to have an eidetic memory, yet he tried to suppress it all. And after a couple drinks, he brought up to the fact to all of them, just be glad you didn't have to live through it. It was, it was bad, okay? It was bad. But there were interesting things that happened. You see, if you look at the screen now, he said, as he brought up different pictures of what each of the different areas would do. One of them noticed that uh, several other women looked like his wife. They said, aren't these forced? No, no, no. These are what certain areas of the world thought was sexy. And this was a very common thing, especially when I was young, way, way before your time. But this went out of style. So did the rest of these as he flipped through, showing things like reptilians, those with massive wings on them, those that look like demons looking like his assistant Cindy, even those that are huge giants of 20, 30 feet tall and just absolutely ripped as you actually see, people went to the extreme back then, like 
very, very much. It was a strange time, Larry would say. And this is one thing we've gotten away from. The improvements of tech were very profound. This made many of the adjustments given were pretty obsolete. Um, as you can see, this one here, flipping back to the reptilian form, you can see that this is reptilian, which means you send this guy into a combat situation, he gets a limb blown off, all that nutrient that's in his tail, he's going to regrow a limb in about a week. You won't have to do anything except give him a bandage to start with. But the problem is you can't even give him an anesthetic. He's going to feel everything. And this was a major issue, especially when you can't change it back. This is why, as you know, most of the alterations now are purely cosmetic. As our wonderful assistant, she has those tiny little wings that stick out of her back. I mean, they do emphasize certain parts of her, along with the strange horn thing she had. I think she had those reduced at one point because they were too heavy. But then again, I've seen pictures of what she was. Would you all like to see? They all looked at each other and nodded and usually said, yeah, we would. Tapping a few buttons, he pulled up the picture of the most plain woman ever seen. Rather short, a little stocky, and with very, very thick glasses on. Raggedy hair in a simple white jacket. This is what your professor used to look like. Everybody was a bit aghast at the idea that she had changed so much. Some of the guys actually, why would she do so much to herself? And of course, all the women simply looked at each other and gave a slight shake to the head like, guys don't understand. At that point, no, they wouldn't. Larry looked over next to the one who had commented and said, could you smack him, please? And with that, the one stepping next to him just swatted him on the shoulder. Thank you. Larry continued saying how things are now more for enhancements as well as cosmetic. And he brought up his own. He noted that he used to be only six feet tall. Now he's standing six two. He used to be broad, but not nearly as built. He's had all these extra things. He simply enhanced what he had to include knowledge. However, when you're looking at that, you want to improve that along with the non-organic. But we'll get into that a little later. Larry stated, this is why general enhancement is so common now. You want to stay as close to human as possible. We don't want to forget who and what we are. This is extremely important. And because of that, a lot of the fights between people who refuse to be enhanced and those that don't mind being enhanced, it pretty much doesn't happen anymore. People have grown out of it. Though, if you want any type of recommendings for enhancement, I recommend that you do additional training and get as many additional certificates as you can all get. They all look that weird. Larry continued with, we all know what happens if you overdo it with the modifications. It's going to turn your insides in the jelly. I've known too many people this has happened to, and it pains me to talk about them. So do me a favor. Don't fuck up like we did when we were younger. We're trying to make sure you don't make the same mistakes. And one of those mistakes was not keeping our pants on. All of you should keep your fucking pants on. You're teenagers, you dumbasses. At that point, they all looked up straight at him. Just remember, with these enhancements, you're essentially immortal, so there's no rush. And it's very important. I want you to remember that because, guess what? I might have been born before the enhancements, but that didn't stop me from going old school, and you see my wife. I went to her father and asked for her hand in marriage because she had not even had a boyfriend. They all looked at him weird like, what, really, huh, in this day and age? He simply nodded. That's the way it is, he said. And it's important, okay? It's important for your soul. If you sit there and you burn out your brain pan too much, we can't fix you. Even with the fact that you need a CNI, cybernetic implant, just to run your own ship. You do remember that you all need that, yes? They all looked at each other and nodded slightly, but didn't actually respond. Just understand, you 
are going to have to wait until you're fully formed. And this is a big decision. It's like getting married or having kids. You can't just skimp out on it. You have to go through with it. So be careful about this. I mean, I know some of you, just by looking at you, some of what you're going to do. But the rest, be very, very picky. Larry looks at his watch and realizes that he's starting to run a low on time. He reminds them to find their area of expertise and for the love of God, stay on your grind, he said. This is important, all of you. You need to find out what's important in your life. Just remember, for women, certain things happen earlier, certain things happen later. For guys, those certain things for women that happen earlier usually happen later, and those things that happen later usually happen sooner. It's the duality of us being human. Welcome to humanity. And I recommend you listen to someone who is well over 250 years old. They looked at him and one simply said, but you don't look over 25. Well, thank you. My, the guys in my family do age young. With that, Larry dismissed them as he really had to get ready for his next class. Returning home for dinner, his wife decided to dress in nothing but an apron, which was not exactly uncommon in his house, considering that she was forced and this was just the way it is. They usually don't wear clothes, so having an apron is actually wearing a lot. But Gretnar had found out the hard way that human skin does not exactly do well when grease splatters at it, so wearing an apron's a really good idea. The children were running around wearing less clothes than usual, and when Larry asked why they were doing so, they simply asked that their friends don't wear clothes, reminding himself that, yeah, he's around other species that really don't. Wearing clothes is almost exclusively a human thing. He did have to remind his kids of the house rules, and when they said, Aw, Dad, he simply turned and with his hand pointed to the side and go, Pants! Now! And as they left, Hurry up! It's time for dinner! And no electronics at the table! Yes, Dad! They came back later, and it was a very good dinner, especially heavy on protein, but that's not to be surprised, since Gretnar will very few times actually cook vegetables. How, during the dinner, Gregnar actually suggested that they go on a camping or hunting trip like they did when they were younger. Larry immediately wanted to bring someone else and asked if they should invite Vince and his wife, if that's a good idea. Gregnar immediately perked up and said, that would be wonderful, but do me a favor. What? Don't invite that, that woman you work with. Cindy? Oh, she's still working with the, uh, the uh, Zeknekel and all them. She won't be back probably for a couple of weeks, at least. Maybe a month. With that, Gretnar couldn't even think about hiding her smile as she realized that she would still have her husband all to herself. The kids started asking about the injuries that each side had taken. It seemed a bit of a bloody affair, and the whole idea of the competition is to actually not kill each other or cause any serious damage. In fact, they're re-evaluating the rules to see if they should even allow shock batons for flyers, but being the fact that they can fly puts an entire new dynamic. The Zeknekel themselves looks like their adjustments did not account for the increase of impact on their bones. The bones themselves were hollow, but they were too hollow and which meant they were far more brittle. In one of the reports, Cindy said that it looked like it was gravel at one point, as she was starting to look at the ribs. Putting them back together was going to be difficult at best. Larry was just glad he wasn't a genetic sister. He would have been over there too. However, most of the Zeknackel, it was more injuries on the surface. It looked far worse than it was, but... They were dealing with a lot of concussions and a lot of impacts, but most of them would be just fine. The only one that really would make a lot of work was going to be the one that crashed and lost one of his wings and, turns out, one of his arms when he hit. This was uh, rather gross, and it was enough to make his daughter wince at the table. So they changed over the Architens. The Architens, well, the wing was... Well, had to be reattached. The problem is, 
it was kind of gone. Gretnar asked, what do you mean gone? He means it's, it's unretrievable. The thing was totally destroyed. The hollow bones of most flyers can't handle that type of impact. Now, the kicker is, if it wasn't for the fact that they caught the wing on a piece of rebar, it's a good possibility that the Architens would have just bounced its way across. As all the ones that landed, if they watch the video, they can see that the Architens are very good at absorbing impact. They would always spin and twist in a way that minimized the impact. Not to mention the feathers themselves are going to be something that uh, <laughs> absorbs a lot of impact. As of right now, those who are injured are on Cindy's own ship. Her ship was not really a warbird like anything that Larry or Vince have, but it's more of a medical ship. Being that she's a geneticist, it just makes sense. The difficulty was dealing with new species and the fact that at least the Zeknekel have started to adjust themselves, which makes the whole process so much more difficult. Working with basic Zeknekel DNA is actually pretty easy, supposedly. And working with the Architens was extremely easy, but the problem is they had to deal with the species and their culture. The Architens was actually willing to self-delete themselves because they lost a wing, which is normal in their culture. And here we are basically denying their culture by regrowing the wing from scratch. Although the Architens, as it sits, doesn't have much to say. The whole process means that you have to pretty much put them in a coma. At that point, both Gretnar and Larry shuddered inside just a little bit, remembering how both of them had been shot out of a tube after all their adjustments had been done. It's a very unpleasant experience. The main issue they were having, though, wasn't the genetic modifications of the Zeknekko or dealing with a new species like the Architens. It was the fact that the other species, along with the Architens and Zeknekko themselves, were wanting more and more access to the human ship. Many of them saying how they needed to be able to see what was happening so they could adjust their own. The Zeknekel wanted to be there to watch over their own folks, but this was obvious they wanted more and more human technology. And once you get on one of the ships, it wouldn't be long before they were starting to scan it to try and figure out how the stealth technology actually worked. Along with that, the Architens were more pissed that their own people were taking into a medical facility without one of their own being present watching over them. Their own version of a battle buddy, which had its own connotations, and they were just angry at the fact that their own personnel was not where anyone could see them. In fact, they had sent a few of their own ships to find Cindy's stealth ship, but Cindy was smart in this regard. As soon as she got the wounded on board, she immediately told the crews of the other ships that brought them in to, well, in nicer words, to get the fuck out of there. And as soon as the doors were closed, the ship itself cloaked and used its gravimetric drive to simply drift off somewhere else. They had no idea where the ship was. This made Gretnar actually wonder and was a little worried with human technology, but since humans weren't exactly being aggressive, everything was okay. After dinner, the family actually sat down to watch the vid screen. An old-fashioned movie was playing, though Larry and Gregnar weren't exactly engrossed in the movie as he decided to continue the uh, practice of what they were doing before. As his hand slid across her tail and, of course, the cheeks below it, Gregnar kept flicking her ears, which was something that her species done when they're getting excited. The kids did notice, but didn't understand why her ears kept flicking. They were more engrossed in the movie itself. Once was done, they sat there and chatted about the movie for about two more minutes. And then, of course, the kids were sent to bed. They were going to have an early morning of training, and they needed to get their sleep. Larry and Gretnar stayed up a little bit longer, and they decided to talk a little bit about Gretnar's family. They had this on the list of things to talk about, but Gretnar had said it was going to be something the kids didn't want to hear. They were going to talk about it in their office, but they got distracted. As it turns out, Gregnar's father is not happy that more and more of his family is deciding to go through adjustments to look more human. They really don't like the idea of completely altering the body. However, he is far from against enhancing the bodies, without changing the outer appearance, that is. 
she showed a 3D image that was sent of before and after. And he went from sort of scary to look at to almost horrifying by human standards. Though he still looked very much like himself, just much, much larger. As it turned out, he was finding out the hard way that when your body increases that size, the amount of mass and proteins that you have to ingest is very high, which is why very few of his own are ever allowed to enhance that size. She decided to talk more about her blonde sister, the one that had enhanced herself and was now going around <clears throat> dating humans. Larry chuckled about this because he knew that that sister was uh, naturally kind of wild in her own way. But the fact that she decided that she was going to be blonde, even though her natural hair color was that of a very deep brown, just made him laugh almost uncontrollably. Gregnar looked at him and was confused as he was barely able to catch his breath. He then asked her about his little sister and his little brother. Gregnar was a little put back as they still refused to adjust themselves and don't like the family changing at all. In fact, they didn't even like their father changing. This was a very high level of contention, but Larry simply said, yeah, humans went through that too. Gregnar was surprised at this. W what do you mean humans went through that? Oh, I was just telling the students earlier today when we started adjusting ourselves, there was the same type of problems. Don't worry, it'll pass. It might take a few decades, but it'll pass. And you'll always have those that refuse to change themselves. It's just the way it is. Don't try to force it. Please, please, please do not try to force that on anyone else because they will start fighting back. Gregnar was a little confused, but she let it go. She changed the subject by going, Oh, I almost forgot. Uh, mother wants to visit to see the grandchildren. Larry didn't mind this at all, as he actually enjoyed hanging out with his mother-in-law, even though his mother-in-law kept shooting him the doomy eyes. She didn't realize that since she hasn't changed herself into human, that was, to his eyes, creepy. However, at that point, he realized that his wife was also sending him basically the same type of eyes. As they started getting handsy on the couch, and he started to raise under her dress, he could see that her ears were beginning to flick just a little bit. But then she suddenly stopped, turned her head and said, We told you to go to bed! Moments later, he could hear the pitter-patter of small feet running down the hallway. With that, they both began to laugh right before Larry reached his hands around and grabbed a handful. A few weeks later, Larry was at school walking down to his office and he saw something he didn't expect to see. A pair of very large wings in the hallway. Whatever had it was facing the other direction. They were similar to bat wings, but not quite that. He was trying to think of it. Something from the past. Something He'd seen almost in a cartoon, but it was so long ago he was trying to remember. His eidetic memory was fighting him as he walked forward trying to figure out where he had seen this style of wings before. He didn't really care too much as he walked up and he realized that it was just a single pair of wings. So it wasn't a Zach Neckel. And then he looks close and he saw the long hair that draped between the wings and it clearly not so modest outfit that was there. Cindy was back, but instead of actually going straight to the office and having their morning meeting, she was showing off her new wings to the students. It seemed as though everybody wanted to get a good look as she was constantly spreading them out and shrinking them back, folding them in, and then stretching them out again, showing all the different movements that she could do. Larry simply walked up and said, Hey, as he walked by, going straight to his office, he really didn't want to get in the way of the students, but he just needed to get everything ready for the day. Cindy simply waved at him because she was in the middle of conversation. Eventually, the crowd of human, Zechnekel, Architons, and even Nashani had shown up. She had finally found her way back to the office. Larry, staying as professional as possible, simply mentioned her improved wings. Cindy mentioned how she didn't want only aesthetics. Especially after seeing how well the Architons could fly, she wanted that feeling. She knew with the form she had, she could only do a little bit of adjustment. 
A little bit of adjustment? Those wings seem pretty fucking big to me. Cindy simply laughed. Yeah, well, it's... We humans are kind of heavy, so I need big wings, she said as she spread them out, knocking a few items off of the desk. Hope you're going to pick that up. Cindy immediately tucked her wings back, folded them, and then proceeded to put everything back on the desk. She then tried to sit down, which was not easy, considering she had to adjust for the new appendages that now stuck out of her back. She talked about how the issue with the Zekneko was dealt with, and she was able to improve their bone structure, make it a bit stronger so it wouldn't break so easy, and unfortunately she did have to rebuild one of the wings from scratch. As it turns out, whatever adjustment they were using was not reptilian exclusively. Because of that, the wings didn't grow back without assistance through human intervention. This was surprising to Larry since he kind of figured that they would stay purely reptilian since that's what their race was. But as it turns out, they were really starting to mess with different things. Larry thought to the past and went, oh shit, not this again. Well, what about the Architens? Are, are they okay with what you did? Oh, absolutely, she would say. She went on to talk about how the Architens after waking up was more than a little pissed that they only had a little bit of plumage on their wings, but they were extremely happy that they had two wings. In fact, the only other issue they had was the fact that the wing was atrophied. They wouldn't be able to fly probably for about six months to a year human time, as they would have to build up their muscles again to make sure it was possible. However, the plumage itself, what they could see, was growing back in the correct coloration. Larry was absolutely amazed that she could do this and congratulated her with a big grin. He knew that doing this was going to bring a lot of good faith between the Architons and humans if they saw that we were willing to actually, through our own good graces and asking absolutely no payment, fix their own people, then only good things can happen. However, Larry's attitude turned somber as he started talking about what he had heard from the other races. The other species were talking about how that human adjustments were giving an unfair tactical advantage, especially in the games. This made them both kind of laugh, as even a geneticist knows that space combat, there's very little to do with genetic alteration. Maybe you can handle a couple extra G-forces, but that's about it. Though, advantage in the games? That's a whole nother bag of worms, for sure. After discussing it for a few more minutes, Larry and Cindy got ready for their first class. Larry was extremely calm, but worried about the situation inside the classroom, knowing that the more of the species start to enhance themselves, the more tension is going to be building up. He was hoping he could keep it level, but... He didn't know until anything would boil over, if anything would boil over, or maybe everything was going to be copacetic and calm. He could only hope. On the way to classroom, he simply stopped. Oh, yeah, I almost forgot to ask. What is it? Can you cover me for an extended weekend? Yeah, why? Oh, I want to take the family on vacation. 